Uh, today's my lecture is called Secrets of Hugging Face Transformers. How to use and fine tune language models. Maybe some listeners already know all this. In that case, I apologize, but hopefully other listeners will learn something new. I know I did when I prepared this lecture. So let's start. What is Hugging Face? Hugging Face is a French company which produces lots of nice deep learning things. In particular, Hugging Face Hub, it's an internet hub with numerous pre-trained models. Transformers framework, which we are going to discuss today, and its friends and side clicks, such as datasets, evaluate, and so on. There are also other frameworks from Hugging Face, for example, Diffusers, which contains stable diffusion. And don't confuse those with other third-party frameworks not from Hugging Face company, but which are using Hugging Face Hub. Examples are Speech Brain and Sentence Transformers. A couple of words about Hugging Face Hub. How to use it? It's very simple. You open Hugging Face Hub, you search for a model you like, and what you see is a screen like this. It's called Model Card. And here you can see various information. For example, what framework to use, how to use the model, and so on. Each model requires a particular framework. In this case, it's Transformers. It can be Transformers or something else, for example, Speech Brain. Also, you can see the task, which is text classification, also the underlying frameworks, PyTorch and TensorFlow, and so on. If you scroll down, uh, you can see code examples, how to use this model. If you go to the right, uh, there is sometimes online demo. And if you click on files and versions tab, you can see all files. So you can see the size of the model to download, like one gigabyte or two gigabytes and so on. Let's start with Transformers framework from Hugging Face. It contains tons of modern pre-trained models. Mostly they are Transformers following the name, but there are also a few convolutional networks and other architectures. It's mainly used for language processing, but there are also many models for vision, speech recognition, including whisper and multimodal models. However, today I am going to present only language models. Transformers framework doesn't implement deep learning from scratch, but instead it's based on lower level frameworks such as PyTorch, TensorFlow and Chex with PyTorch being default. What does it mean? Most models are PyTorch models. But all, some models also support TensorFlow as an alternative and Chex is the rarest. Um, the framework also contains high-level pipelines for various tasks. Let's start. By the way, I created code examples. Is that I put it into a repository. It's here. And if you really want to understand what I'm talking about today, look at the code. Lecture is not enough. We start with sentiment analysis with distilled bird. First, I want to say that um, the, the framework has something called pipelines. And the most important thing is pipelines are not the models. There are two different concepts. Pipelines are high-level API with tons of stuff hidden under the hood. And uh, cre you create pipeline very easily. Transform as pipeline, you specify task, in our case, sentiment analysis, and the model name. Model name is the official model name from the Hugging Face Hub. And then you can just run the pipeline to classify some text. 
Sentiment analysis is a binary classification with, of the text with two classes, positive and negative. And the result is dictionary for label positive and negative and the confidence score. What pipelines is what people usually start when they start to learn transformers frameworks but of course they are not very interesting for us but what is good for novices is bad for experts in particular pipelines are hard to understand not not like this but really understand what happens under the hood how they will there is a lot of hidden logic there they're hard to tweak their behavior yeah, you cannot train them and otherwise you cannot use for anything that the authors of the framework didn't think of in advance uh, no like uh, new or complicated tasks so uh, pipelines are not very interesting we are interested in models and, mo and models in the transformer framework terminology are just regular models of PyTorch or or other frameworks uh, with some with some uh, con conventions from imposed by the framework and you create models uh, like this let's now try to reproduce our sentiment analysis uh, without using pipelines you using only models how to do that First, we create the model. Here is the model class transformer, distilled bird for sequence classifications. Every model is supported by transformers framework has its own class like that, which is just a PyTorch module class uh, with a model structure. But if we want to train model, we have to lower these weights from the hugging face hub. And for that, there is a standard syntax in the framework for everything using from pre-trained static method and the model name from the hub. And of course, it downloads from the hub our, I don't know, gigabyte-sized model only the first time. After that, it cached on your computer. If you try the uh, different models, uh, take care that they don't fill your hard drive. The framework also has a number of automatic models which chooses the appropriate class automatically. Instead of the exact model, we could use auto model for sequence classification. And then we, when we load um, weights from from the hub which spread for with from pre-trained it automatically infers that it's distilled bird and creates the appropriate class. However, in order to classify the text, we need not a simple distilled bird, but distilled bird with classification head. And if we take our own class, such as auto model or distilled bird model, they will not work for classification because they don't have a head. So uh, it's easy to do mistake like that. When in doubt, always use the exact model class like this. Next, we need a tokenizer and we load tokenizer with transformers auto tokenizer from pre-trained the same logic and model name, where model name is our distilled bird something. There is no separate model name from tokenizer. There are kind of a part uh, of the transformer model from the point of view of uh, hugging face hub. But what is a tokenizer? Tokenizer is a simple, very simple neural network, or, uh, we, or just not really neural network, very simple routine, which converts text into integer encodings, uh, integer tokens. And token for language models is usually is approximately the same thing as word or punctuation side. Sometimes it could be part of a word or an individual character, but usually to one token is a word for most models uh, of uh, of the framework. Uh, tokenizer, it's more with model specific. It uh, uses a fixed model specific dictionary, like all English words and their integer encodings. And this dictionary and tokenizer is unique. Every model, like BERT or GPT or Distilled BERT, in general, uses different tokenizer. Let's try our tokenizer in action. <coughs> Let's include a short 
text. If you look at the output, it's a dictionary. You may have noticed that uh, the Transformers framework really likes dictionaries and dictionary like objects. And it has uh, two keys, input IDs and attention mask, where, which is a standard keys for all language models of the framework, where input IDs are just uh, the, our text tokenized into integer encodings, and the tension mask uh, should be basically always one. And uh, <laughs> you, you pay attention, you may have noticed. How many tokens do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, exclamation mark. How many do we have here? Seven. What's going on? To see what's going on, just decode the tokens using tokenized decode and the list of integers. Uh, and you get a result. Uh, here we have uh, two extra tokens, CLS and SEP. They're special tokens of the still bird and unique to the still bird. If you use tokenizer from other models, you wouldn't get anything like that. Tokenizer can also tokenize batches if you supply a list of strings as an input, producing list of lists kind of structures. Notice that the lengths of different of two sequences are different. And if you decode with batch decode, you get the original text back plus the special tokens. This is all very nice. Unfortunately, such data will not work with our distilled bird model. Why? Because distilled bird model wants PyTorch tensors and not the lists that we have. And in order to tokenize into PyTorch tensors, you need some extra options like return tensors PT. But look, PyTorch tensors of a batch should be orthogonal. So all, all sequences should be of the same length. But here our sequences have different lengths. That's why you need padding and optionally also truncation, options with max lengths. And after uh, you do tokenization, the shorter sequences got padded by zeros, which is a padding special token. And attention mask uh, is also padded by zeros, basically excluding these uh, tokens from transformers. And if you decode such a batch, you can see that uh, the zeros became pad special tokens. Now we can finally send our tensors to the model. You call the model with arguments, input IDs and attention mask. You see the names are the same as the dictionary keys. So if you want, you can use Python 2 asterisk syntax, but I prefer the explicit syntax as more readable. The output is a sequence classifier output objects, basically a dict, which contains several keys, including logits, two by two tensors, uh, or in general, B by two, where B is a batch size. And from the name logits, you could probably guess what to do with this. You can take argmax over the second axis, and you get prediction that one zero first sentences positive second sentence is negative, which is the correct classification. So what did we do? We succeeded in classifying the text without using pipelines, using only model. Beautiful. Just a little reality check. Do you hear me? Do you see? Is everything fine? Yes. Let's, uh, let's now look at the text generation with GPT-2. It's with pipelines, it's also pretty simple. The task is called text generation and the model simply GPT-2. And then you generate text calling pipe on the prompt and you will get a longer generated text. Of course, if you run the code, you will not get this text. You will get a different result because text generation is in chain by default random. You get a new text each time.
And now again, we want to reproduce this without pipelines. How to do this? First, we load model and tokenizer. And again, we had to use not the generic GPT-2, but GPT-2 model with a generated head. And tokenizer now is, is a GPT-2 tokenizer. And then we tokenize the input. You see, now you don't get any special tokens. It's a different, no padding. It's a different kind of tokenizer from the one we used before. <coughs> Once again, tokenizer is always model specific. Now we can generate the text using generate function of the model with argument input IDs, attention mask, and max length. We, we get a, a tensor of tokens. If you decode them, you will get with the tokenizer batch decode, you will get the, the generated text. Everything works fine. Or does it? Actually not. If you run the code again, you will see that the output will be exactly the same, which is not the behavior we had with pipelines where the generation was random. Somehow temperature has not been enabled. What's going on? Why is it different from pipeline and how to fix it? To understand what's going on, we have to look at the model config. Actually, we didn't see it before, but every model in, in our framework has, has a config. And GPT-2 has a GPT-2 config. And we can load it from pre-trained model from Hugging Face Hub. That's what usually happens automatically when you load a pre-trained model, but here we do it explicitly. If you look at config, it looks like a dict, but it's actually not a dict, more like a Python object with fields. And it's data, data class. And it has a lot of various settings like model size, number of layers, and uh, activation functions, and all this. And and somewhere in the end, we see something interesting, task-specific parameters. And they have one task here, text generation, and two parameters. What is this? Task-specific parameters are the changes to the config used by specific tasks. If we do use pipeline, they pipeline the looks aha. Uh, we were doing text generation, and here they config to, for the text generation. We have to apply these parameters. And now we are not using pipelines. We have to do it by hand. So just copy two parameters from the text generation section into the main config. And now we create the model from pre-trained uh, uh, model on the hub, but with modified config. And when we do it, uh, we get randomized results just in the pipeline. Beautiful. <laughs> so now we, we, we know everything about GPT-2 generation. Really, everything, not really. We're still using the generate method. And what does this generate method do? Who knows? It's some, some secret magic under the hood. And now the ultimate challenge. We want to understand how generate method works and reproduce this behavior, generate text without the generate method. And in order to do that, we have to know how GPT-2 actually works. You probably know this already, but I'll, just in case, I'll give a brief reminder. <laughs> Our input data is a secret batch uh, of integer sequence, integer tokens. Uh, so we dimension B key, where B is batch size and T is number of tokens. <laughs> then... There is embedder which replaces integer tokens with, with d dimensional vector input embeddings, where d for GPT-2 is a transformer dimension 768. And then this data, BTD, goes into transformer. And the transformer doesn't change this size, so output data of the transformer proper will have the same dimension, BTD. And if we used vanilla GPT-2 model without a generation head, we'll get this output. 
output called last hidden state, same size as the input embeddings. But if we have a generation head, we instead get a tensor called logits of the size BTV, where V is a dictionary size, number of possible token, so we 50,000. And, and if we take uh, ergmax uh, over the last dimension, we give the prediction of the next token at each position. That's the zero temperature prediction. And if we want a temperature prediction, replace ergmax with softmax and random sampling from the probability distribution. How do you train GPT-2? The general idea is like that. We teach the model to predict the next token in the sequence at each position. You have logits of size BTV and labels of size BT. Labels are nothing but input IDs shifted by one position to the left. Note that in, in the Transformers framework, the, you don't have to shift anything. It happens by itself. And the, the loss is a standard cross entropy loss averaged over a batch dimension and also t, the length of sequence. It works like this input IDs is some kind of text. Of course, they're tokens, but for clarity, are represented as text. And labels are the same tokens shifted by one position to the left. And at each position, you want to predict the next word. That's how GPT 2 is trained. Then, how do you generate? the text it's simple and for simplicity i do the zero temperature version when we run gpt on a text what does the what does the logics at last position are and the logics at the very last position are predicting the next token which will go after this text so gpt2 generation goes like this you get the sequence of token, you run the model, you take the prediction at the very last position, predict the token with argmax or the random sampling if you have temperature, and then you get a new token, next word, basically, and you add this word to the sequence of word we already have. And then uh, you run it again, generating one word every time, iteratively. And after we finished, we decode the whole sequence and get the generated text. And if we do this, we get exactly the same result, which we get with generate function with zero temperature. So we successfully understand how GPT-2 works and how to generate text from higher level pipeline to the lowest level generation by, generating by hand. And I repeat, it's very important that GPT generates only one token at a time. <laughs> Sometimes such models are called autoregressive. What does it mean? First, it means that it's not very efficient. If you want to generate long text, then you have to run model inference, uh, which uh, for each new generated words, which basically requires, I don't know, some computer power, electricity, and so on. And the second problem with generating a long text uh, is uh, <laughs> the exponential diverging problem. Let me cite Jan LeCun, which discusses GPT. LLMs are exponentially diverging diffusion processes. Here is the argument. Let E be the probability that any generated token exists in the tree of correct answers. Then the probability that an answer of length n is correct is 1 minus E to power n. Errors accumulate. The probability of correctness decreases exponentially. One can mitigate the problem by making E smaller through training, but one simply cannot eliminate the problem entirely. A solution would require to make LLMs non-autoregressive while preserving their fluency. And now we are finished with inference. We are almost ready for training. But before we train, let's take a very brief look onto the Hagen phase datasets framework. Hagen phase datasets framework 
provides data sets downloadable from the Hagen Face Hub. It's based on a patch arrow. It can generate PyTorch tensors if requested, and it's often used to train transformers models. Let's try it in action. Load a data set Rotten Tomatoes. Actually, it has three splits. That's why you get a data set dict class. And if you want a single data set, you should specify the split you want. Let's have a look at the data set. If you print it, you can see two features or columns, text and label, and number of rows or data set elements. If you print these set features, you get more information about features like one is string and second it has two classes you can also print the length of the data set which is the same as new rows and the description let's index the data set if you index by number you get a single data set elements as a python dict of features like this if you index by feature name, if you return a long list of values for one particular feature, like labels. And if you do a slice, then you, then you get a dictionary of lists, not a data set object, which is very important. Like first two elements of data set represented as dictionary of lists. But sometimes it's not good. Uh, dict is not a good substitute for the data set object. What if we want a slice of the subset as a data set object? It's also possible. It's called selection in the data sets framework, and it's simple. The set select range 10. You get a smaller data set object with only 10 rows. It's an object of class dataset with only 10 elements, but it's not a dictionary, it's dataset class. How can we transform the dataset? The map method adds new columns to the dataset by a function. We can tokenize the entire dataset with such a lambda, and it adds two new columns, input ID, so attention mask to the entire dataset. Or you can tokenize with your own lambda function, like, for example, adding a new key, text length length of the text. Note that the original data set is not modified. A new data set object is created with added columns. Or another way of transforming is transforming on the fly. So you don't transform the entire data set, but apply certain transformation every time you get index or slice of the data set. And it looks like this for tokenization. But unlike map, it will replace the original columns with completely new columns, not add the columns. If you want to add the columns, you have to write more complicated lambda by yourself. You can convert specified columns to PyTorch tensor. For example, here the three columns, but not text, which cannot be a tensor. You can delete a column if you don't want it, or print column names. Okay, enough of the data set. Let's start training. Let's try to train distilled bird for sentiment analysis. We take, we take a model from PyTorch Hub called Distilled Bird based on case. It's not the same model we used before. It's a different model, which is a mask fill model. It cannot do sentiment analysis. But now we take this mask fill version of Distilled Bird and try to find unit to do sentiment analysis on Rotten Tomatoes. We load data set, model tokenizer, then we tokenize the entire data set and also create something called collator from tokenizer. What is a collator? I'll explain very soon. Then we create a small, a smaller data set we select so that it can train quickly, really quickly. But we make sure that our small slices have equal number of labels 0 and 1. 
And then we create a training arguments class and with defaults and then modified some arguments like learning rate, batch size, number of epochs and so on. There are tons of options you can do here. See the documentation. And finally, we create a trainer class and train. And if you do everything correctly, the training works. However, trainer is some kind of black box. What does it do? Who knows? How does it work? Who knows how to change its configuration? Who knows? And when seen this code, for example, I immediately got three questions. First, we already tokenized the data set. Why do we need to specify send tokenizer to the trainer? It doesn't make sense. Second, what the heck is the collator and why do we need it? And third, where is the loss function in this picture? I don't see loss function anywhere. And it took me some effort and going into the code of Transformers framework, but now I can give you the answers. First, the second question first. Collator is nothing but a function collator fan of a PyTorch data loader. This trainer actually creates a PyTorch data loader from my data set and it needs a collate function. Collate function is a function which receives a list of data set elements and creates a batch from them. So you can call collator and specify like list of, of elements of my data set. However, if you do it just like that, it will not work because of the text column of the data set, which cannot be converted to PyTorch tensor. It creates problem. That's why we have to delete the column text, which trainer also does automatically. And then we can use collator creating a batch from data set elements. In our particular case, there is a problem of sequence of different lengths. In our data set, there are sequences of different lengths. And the default um, collator of Transformers framework data collator with padding, it creates a batch by, by padding the sequence to the maximum length of the bed. That's why it needs a tokenizer, so the tokenizer knows the pad token for the particular model. It can do the pad. And in this case, on the fly, we have repaired to the long everything to the longest sequence of the batch and create a PyTorch tensor. Alternatively, you could have paid the entire data set, but here we do patch padding on the sorry padding. We, here we do padding on the fly. The first question, tokenizer. Trainer actually does not use tokenizer for any sin of importance. It uses it to create coll collator. If we don't specify collator, it maybe uses it when saving and loading models or things like that, but nothing important. Our data set is already tokenized. And but now we can ask, wait a minute, our model is by touch model. Do we really need to use this strange thing called trainer? Can we get rid of it and train PyTorch model or just like every other PyTorch model with pure PyTorch training loop? And the answer is yes. And it will take just a few lines of code more. Let me now show you how to train the model without stupid trainer using pure PyTorch. We created the model. Uh, tokenizer everything as before, remove column text, uh, which conflicts with collator, then create PyTorch data loader. The know that this is from PyTorch, no hiding face here. Using the collator, uh, we created batch size and so on, created the data loader. Then we do the standard PyTorch training loop. But where is the loss function? Remember my, my last question, where is the loss function? And the answer is, it's in the model itself, which is of course not the standard philosophy of PyTorch, but it's the standard philosophy of Transformers framework. 
if we call the model with labels specified in that case the model returns loss like one of the t's of the output dictionary and we can use loss back, back propagation as usual to train in pytorch training loop in my opinion this is much nicer than the trainer class because we really understand how training happens and we can and we can control every step of the training process by hand and now the last topic of today's lecture gpt2 training how is it different from distilled dot well it's quite different first unlike birds gpt models are not very pattern friendly they are best trained to batches of standard lengths usually 1024 tokens so what we did we didn't use any standard data sets like rotten, rotten tomatoes which would only complicate things a lot but we take a time a text corpus which happens to be gpt1 paper and split it into the 512 token chunks you can see code uh, for details it's not very interesting pure python programming anyway we split we tokenized and split into such chunks then we use no collator and no padding actually the default collator of such chunks and now we do the training but before we train we need a data set i create a simple pytorch data set which serves data chunks as, as by uh, pytorch tensor as input ids and the same tensor input ids will become labels not shifted the model shifts by itself so input ids and labels are the same text and attention mask is a just tensor of ones and now we can train such a model in a standard PyTorch training loop, uh, supplying arguments, input IDs, attention mask, and labels, uh, and then back propagate the loss. Labels don't shift again, don't shift labels, they're shifted by the model automatically. And when I do such training, I could easily and quickly overfit to the training set or training corpus in this case first i started from pre-trained gpt2 and in something like 20 epochs i was able to overfit a few seconds on my computer could overfit to the training set then i started uh, not from pre-trained models but from an initialized gpt2 it took a, a bit more time a few hundred epochs at least but i was also able to overfit to the training and set and even generate unfortunately in my example validation loss increased and not decreased while training because of bad overfit but it's unavoidable i had really tiny corpus and trained a pretty large more so hopefully if you had a larger corpus you would get uh, not so much overfit and if you want to use trainer class i don't but i but i tested this example then you just supply the data set and no tokenizer and no collator and everything works fine even with the trainer and now oh, that we succeeded to train gpt2 that's all for today thank you for your attention this is all i need